Hi everyone, in chapter 13, we're gonna talk a little bit about innovation and evidence and how to create a culture of wanting to improve care and advancing best practices in high quality care. And we're gonna talk about some of the overlaps between evidence and innovation. This is a new way to think about evidence-based practice. Innovation is the introduction of something new that promises to be challenging existing concepts, practices, and products. The first impression is that evidence and innovation are on the opposite ends of the spectrum. However, there's a symbiotic relationship between evidence and innovation that is dynamic, rigorous, and structured. And what that means is that evidence is dynamic. It's always moving. Evidence-based practice is not necessarily a process, but it's dynamic. There's a high level of fluidity, mobility, and portability. And if you think about this, the best example I could think about, again, I hate to keep talking about COVID, but it's COVID. As we know, it within our, within our institutions and hospitals, we've been practicing over the past year, protocols have changed as to how we're going to treat these patients. Um, the PPE that we need, how are we going to test, what do the test results mean, how long you have to do things within the hospital. But if you see this on the outside from the public point of view, they have not seen this evidence as fun because people are confused as to why one week we have to quarantine for 10 days and the next week we have to quarantine for 14 and now it's down to seven days with a negative test. Evidence is, this is what? We are living this process because it is fluid and it's moving and it's portable and it's changing constantly because we're developing new evidence and new processes. So it's kind of an interesting time again to be seeing the evidence. There are um, some key concepts in understanding how the evidence-based process and innovation intertwine together. And cybernetic is one, and that revolves a cyclical communication and control. And I promise there's some um, uh, diagrams that make this a little bit more easy to understand. And then there is the cybernetic dynamics, which refers to the continuous cyclical interaction between the evidence and the innovation. The fundamental premise to all this is that healthcare is not consistent or stagnant, but it's in constant motion. We need someone, when we're looking at these two concepts, who is in the innovator role. That person is grounded and respects the discipline of science, the scientific process. They understand the components of good science. They're schooled in both scientific process and translational skills, which is what we're teaching you to do. They are aware of the consistency of fluidity of the movement and the interface between each element. And science is actually the link between evidence and innovation. And this is the model that makes it look a little bit, um, that like, makes it look a little bit more uh, real and how it, how it affects things. So at the top, you see the environmental forces that are playing into this, and that are social factors, policies, and economics. Then if you look down, we have um, in the middle, there is knowledge and creation and research, which includes the practice expertise and the clinical values, the culture of care and the impact. And then when we notice these gaps in the gaps within what we're trying to learn, that's where we hit innovation, where we enhance, advance and create new processes and uh, guidelines things. So it's, it's very fluid and moving, and I think the diagram makes it a little bit easier to understand. We're going to talk about the complexity of leadership. Um, and what that means is that's leadership that supports the complexity of nonlinear, multiple interrelated 
interrelationships and directions, uncertainty, and self-organizing and emerging activities. What that means is these leaders have to be forward thinkers. They must engage in personal reflection and ego management. They adopt the style of appreciative inquiry. They have high levels of emotional competence and they use creativity and open dialogue to make decisions with the team. And they're continuously mindful of the bigger picture in which decisions are being made. They demonstrate a willingness to stretch performance. And what we, what we do is we need these leaders, these leaders to help build the infrastructure where knowledge can be translated into a normal part of practices. They need to create constant and systematic frameworks where, again, there can be management of the knowledge, generation and translation with application into evidence-based processes. There must be transparency and systems must acknowledge the creation and research they encourage around innovation. So again, this is where we need good leadership to help us innovate these processes. And this is how it all works. Uh, one of the kind of the sidebars as to how this helps work. So here in our model, we're going to talk about um, knowledge creation and research. We're going to have a question here that is the following statement true or false complexity leadership is a form of leadership that provides a structured and systematic approach to building systems where knowledge management generation translation and application can occur that is false uh, complexity leadership does not support structure and systematic frameworks and systems but rather leadership that supports the complexity of non-linear multiple interrelationships and directions, uncertainty, kind of this bigger picture in this fluid movement. Structure means that they don't support that healthcare is fluid and moving. They are very systematic in their ways of thinking. So when we're looking at the model, where does practice expertise fit in? It's right there uh, in the middle. And where, what that means is that for practice, this is going to be evidence from practice that comes from past practices, experience, collective wisdom, and standards. Again, you may have only ever taken care of one person in thyroid storm five years ago, and you remember from that last time, this is what happened. This care collaboration addresses the gap between practice, expertise, and knowledge. And again, bringing all, this, bringing all the stakeholders together to improve quality of care and lower costs is where all that practice expertise fits in. And if you see, there's all these little pieces of the evidence-based model that are coming um, together. Now we're going to talk about um, clinical and patient values. Patients have specific values that they're going to come in with and cultural beliefs, and we need to respect those. And they're going to be grounded in faith, culture, and family and health practices. Uh, and these can definitely affect the outcome of whatever interventions we're trying to do. So again, innovation has to take all these things into account and be respectful of them. If we're going to create a culture of care within the culture of innovation, there's a few other things that we need to consider. And the culture of care is going to create an infrastructure necessary for evidence-based practice to make a lasting in impact. It's going to lead to higher levels of quality of service and patient care and outcomes. It's going to assume practice unfolds and it's, again, constantly moving and dynamic. It is going to be ever informed and move with shifts in the environment, science-based dynamics, 
and the dialogue with the relationship between caregivers and patients. There's also going to be conditions where creative and adaptation, refinement and improvement, and advancement and enhancement of practices and process can all take place. The culture of care sits within the practice of innovation. Behaviors of, piders, of providers and patients are the best indicators of whether there is an environment where the culture of care can intertwine with the culture of innovation. And some of these indications that we want to look for are that there's frank, open communication when asking questions. There's the capacity within the network and across the system to do this. There are the resources to do it. There's availability of an awareness that changing external environments and the ability to adapt the internal environment, which would be like the hospital per se, to the external changes that are happening, which are things outside the hospital. There must also be an awareness that no practice is permanent and there's a willingness to act on evidence. So again, a lot of this is going to be when you get out into practice, educating people on evidence-based practice, but the first thing we have to do is learn about it, which is why we're here. So when we put all this together, it's a pretty complex model, but you can see that how each circle builds on the other, where we have what we already know with the research, clinical practice, clinical values in the middle, but yet there's an overlap with the green innovation that helps close those gaps in the literature. The takeaway from this is that evidence is a moving evidence is a moving force. It's always going to change and having a culture that supports this innovation and change is going to be uh, super important, especially as we move healthcare into the next uh, century and we move towards a more cost-effective healthcare system.